What should the proper role of a father be for their children? Uh, that's a that's a interesting question that I have pondered a lot over the last almost fifty years, and uh, I I have some thoughts on it. I don't know that I have an absolute answer, but I hope that some of my thoughts will help you think about it, and you'll agree with some and disagree with others, and uh, we'll see where we'll see where we land here. My personal background is that I was reared by my mother. Uh, she essentially tricked my biological father uh, and had a baby. She just wanted a baby. And they dated and, and all was well. And she thought, oh, this would be a good person to father a child. And when I was born, she didn't uh, even put him on the birth certificate. You know, She said this wasn't his choice to take on the responsibility of a child. And so she's not going to harness him with that and, you know, have him make him pay child support or anything like that. And he never did. Uh, when I was born, uh, they had uh, split up by then, and uh, he lived, I don't know, 10, 15 miles away, and she called to say, hey, we've got a baby boy here, do you want to come see him? And he just, he didn't have a car, so he didn't have any way to, to get there in the San Diego area. Uh, so that was his level of interest until I found him at, uh, I think I was about 20 years old when I found him. So I was reared without a, uh, a dad in the picture. And uh, my mother never dated anyone. You know, she dated two guys, but she didn't date anyone who became a, a father figure to me. And so that was kind of my background, is being reared in the absence of a, a dad, a father. And so I'm certainly going to look at things from a very different perspective from someone who had a good or a bad dad that was very much in the picture. So take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm sure we all have different situations in our lives. I am thinking about the Mennonite uh, community that I grew up in. And the role of a father was to be kind of the strong disciplinarian leader of the family, of the children. Uh, was the dad's job to go out and, and earn money and, and bring it into the household. It was his decision, you know, where they lived, which church the family would attend, that kind of thing. Uh, and the tradition was that children would go through eight years of formal uh, education in a, a little country school. Remember one of them I attended had, uh, I think, nine or ten students, grades one through eight, no electricity or running water. Um, just out in a pasture. It was an old abandoned house and had a, a wonderful teacher, Emma, who would teach us there. And and then uh, another one I went to, I think they, it, was a, it was a bigger one. There were The room was split uh, in half, grades one through four on one side and five through eight on the other. Um, and, and this was kind of the, uh, just the way that kids went to school. And the education was, of course, far superior to a, a government school, a public school, uh, in things like reading and writing and and arithmetic. So for the first eight years, that was my experience. And that was my primary experience were these private schools. Uh, and so, so it was with most uh, children born into the Mennonite community. We joined it later. Uh, but for people who grew up in that, they would go through those eight years and then they would graduate from school at age 13 or 14 usually. And then the son would work with dad. The daughter would work with mom. And many of the men, the dads, were in the construction business or the farming business. And so construction, for example, let's say the person was a roofer. Uh, the 14-year-old boy would start working with dad full-time uh, and not the, the, the kind of the lazy new people's 40 hour a week full time, but like really, truly full time, get up and do chores for an hour before leaving the house and then go work for eight or 10 hours, six days a week. Uh, and dad would start out not paying him much, maybe a dollar an hour. And this was just that what they expected. This is how it went. Um, and of course the, the kid had already been from age 10 or 11 had been coming to work with dad and helping on job sites in the summers and weekends and such, but hadn't really been a full-time employee until then. And so this kid, aged 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, kept working with dad in this, we'll say, roofing business and is learning how to be really good at it and is 
getting some tools of, of their own. And rather than paying them the going rate back in my day of six or seven or eight dollars an hour, dad would continue paying them one dollar an hour, maybe two dollars an hour, that the kid would get to keep that money and save it up and go buy a pocket knife or, or you know, whatever a kid would want. And so as time went on, the Mennonites believed that a, a child became of age at age 21. So age 14 through 21, uh, this boy would work in the, uh, the roofing business with dad and his construction company. And then all of a sudden at age 21, dad would carve off an acre or five acres of the farm. And he and the, the son would spend the summer building a house for the son and he would give the son a pickup truck or this maybe the son has already purchased his own but all of a sudden dad's giving him all of these tools and now a year later you take this 20 year 22 year old boy and he has many years of experience in a trade he's good at it he knows leadership skills the actual skills of the trade he has a paid-off motor vehicle, a paid-off house on land, and a set of tools to go out in the world and continue doing the, the trade and building a life for himself. And around this time, he'd, he'd end up with that special gal, and, and she would come into the home, and they would have, well, it was Mennonite, so a lot of kids, and it would just continue generation after generation. And that was one role of fatherhood, I think about a couple of other friends, and I think about what their roles were, and their roles were to be more of a, a friend, a lovey-dovey friend who was there if, if the son needed to cry, and he'd give him a hug and tell him it was all going to be okay, and, and then without the kid having ever done anything much that was productive or showed dedication or learn much or become any value to the world, like, you know, like, that's kind of cruel, but like in a real true sense, it's not really like the world's going to miss much if this person goes away or, you know, just stopped living. Uh, that kid then is given a car, a nice brand new car and their insurance is paid and, and dad helps them with a down payment on a house. And all of this is just a, a, a gift or is expected by the kid. And maybe the parents pay for the college so the kid can go and learn, I don't know, um, journalism or uh, Native American history of Aboriginal women's rights or, you know, whatever. Something that's not a degree that you're going to go out and really use to, to make a living for you and yours. And so the kid then goes out, buys their first condo, house, whatever, with parents huge financial support, doesn't have any way to support it, doesn't like the career that they were doing, is a waiter or completely chooses a different career, uh, it fails, they lose the house, they move back in with mom and dad, and dad is always there to support them. And when they get the DUI, dad's there to bail them out and, and tell them it's all okay and help pay for their attorney and, and just kind of coddle them. So that's been another experience that I've had uh, or that I've not that I've had but that I've observed other uh, people having as for me I became a dad when my daughters were ages seven and nine and so my situation was uh, you know a little bit different than than some people's um, I never once called my daughters stepdaughters uh, they just they weren't they were my daughters they they have an awesome dad. He's a good guy. Just didn't work out with with him and and my wife. Uh, but he he's a good guy, and I never wanted to step on his toes. You know, I never required them to call me dad or father, and and neither of them ever did. Um, neither of them showed that they cared much for me. You know, there were a few years when they were younger that uh, maybe a little bit, but uh, there was never a, a very close. Um, relationship with us. I just always thought, you know, they're my daughters. I'm going to teach them as best I can, provide experiences as best I can for them, um, and let them learn the rough, tough life. 
uh, while it's safe to do so. My eldest daughter, when she uh, got out of high school, and we'd made this clear earlier that, you know, we weren't going to supply housing unless she was doing something productive. You know, if she wanted to follow some career path or education path or something and, and do productive things, then we would help support her financially, you know, with a house and uh, tuition and that kind of thing. But if she didn't have a good plan that we weren't going to just help her for kicks and giggles or because she happened to be our daughter. And so a week after graduating, she didn't have any good plans in place and she'd had, you know, a year to get them in place and she chose not to. And so uh, we, you know, no longer could she live at our house and, and she spent a few nights at uh, sleeping in her car, her little old junker clunker car in a parking structure in town and didn't like that so much. And then decided to get more serious about a career. And some of my friends would have said, wow, you're really being a bad dad. You're letting an 18 year old girl sleep in the back seat of a clunker car in a parking structure. Like be a good dad, let her have the, the room is sitting there empty with her bed in it and a nice shower. Like give her this chance. Uh, and many people thought that that would be the way to go. I, I continue to think that isn't a good way to go. Um, I think that the real world's rough and tough, and you prepare a child for it as best as possible, and then uh, don't coddle them forever. They've got to leave the nest, they've got to flop a few times, and then they figure it out. So that was uh, kind of my attitude uh, as I helped my wife in, in rearing our daughters. There are a lot of different things that a father can be, and I suspect that depending on the experiences that we have each had, and I should probably only speak from a male standpoint, uh, because I do identify uh, <laughs> as, a, uh, as a male, uh, for a male son uh, or a male father, I don't know what the perfect combination of rough, tough, yep, you fell, kid, get up and brush it off, let's keep going, or, oh my gosh, honey, you have a owie knee, I understand what it must feel like to experience pain, that must be traumatic for you, you're a victim, get used to being a victim, because that's how you should live your life, I don't know what the, well, I know that's not right, but I don't know what the perfect attitude for a father to have toward his son is, or toward his daughters, um, I, I think we each have to make that choice. I will say that my current thinking is that children are born with certain aptitudes, certain abilities. They're born with a certain intelligence quotient. Uh, they're born either with a, uh, an ability to get along well with others and to recognize nuances, or they're not. And there can be some kid that is just off the charts brainiac high IQ who doesn't pick up on social cues and the nuances of interpersonal communications. And that person might go on to start an electric car company or uh, be an accountant or uh, a chemist or something like that. Things that, that I just don't have the brains for. They might be very successful in those areas. Other people just naturally have the people skills, but not the uh, not those that many of the uh, the brain smarts, the uh, uh, what are the analytical skills, the the science aptitude, and so for for a parent to try to guide their child who doesn't have an aptitude for something into a preset cookie cutter, this is the you need to go to college and learn how to be an accountant, even though you have no aptitude for it. That's not fair to the kid. My current thinking is that perhaps the parent's best option is to rear their children, providing them with many opportunities to learn and experience, see what the kids are interested in, provide more experiences in that way, more opportunities for education. If the kid really likes dinosaurs, then help them find a way to, to go to some place where they're doing excavation uh, of dinosaur remains and and let the kid intern for the summer when they're 13 or 14 or whatever. If that's their area of interest, help them get those opportunities to learn more. And then 
let the kids struggle some while they're still in the house before they leave the house at 15 or 16 17 18 whatever make sure they have opportunities to fail make sure that they know what it's like to work really 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 hard and then not get paid for it because they get stiffed by the the person who hired them to do it make sure they have the opportunity to loan a valuable personal item to a friend who then breaks it or loses it um, make sure they have all of these life experiences that will make them better human beings and not like the stupid Subaru driver right in front of me right now. Um, help them have all of these experiences because it's much less expensive to make mistakes when you are 13 or 17 and you're still going to have a roof over your head and medical care and you, you have a safety net at that age that's when you should be making a lot of mistakes and parents should provide that opportunity to make those mistakes uh, so that the child can learn from that. That's part of my thinking, some of my thinking of what I think is most important for a dad to provide to a son or daughter. Uh, of course, setting in a good example, there are many other things, but that was kind of what was on my mind this morning. And I'd be interested to see if you agree, disagree, if you had have third, fourth, 18th other options things that you think are more important I look forward to hearing your feedback